So in the coming decades, the rate of urbanization in the world is increasing massively. Hundreds of millions of people are moving from villages to cities in China, India, Africa. And what that means is that existing healthcare and transportation and other basic service infrastructure is strangulating itself under the demands of this rapid urbanization. This puts a great deal of pressure on governments, on bridges, roads, doctors, education, and something needs to be done to accommodate these new residents of cities globally. So the cities of the future need to be designed in a human-centric manner. What does that mean? That means that the focus should not be just on technology, even though we know that the foundation of all modern cities, or smart cities as they're called, will be based on Internet of Things, on artificial intelligence, on smart and connected objects. But the focus every time should be the resident of the city, what their needs are. So what is a smart city? In my opinion, a smart city is defined by three main pillars. The first is your networking infrastructure. Without 5G networks in the long run, without investment in sensors for smart infrastructure, it's very hard to actually build a smart city. The second one is, are you optimizing the resources that you already have? For example, water is a precious resource yet we see a lot of it is not productively deployed in cities. And the third one is, are your citizens finding it valuable? Are they actually using it? What is the rate of citizen adoption? And if you look at all three measures, then you realize that a smart city is not that futuristic city or Wakanda in the movies only. They are smart cities or cities with bits of smartness all around us. There's New York which is known for using smart meters for water. There is Pune, which is much poorer, but is focusing on waste management. And of course, then there is Singapore, which many think is the smartest city in the world. And it's evolved from being a smart city to a smart nation, thinking beyond just technology to skills and the economy and industries of the future. So smart cities meme is evolving and we really need to understand it properly to value it and to build these cities in the world. The old way of providing services to city residents was primarily through government agencies and public services. But now there are two reasons why that model does not work. Number one, the rapid rate of urbanization means that the cities are ballooning with people and the current infrastructure is under extreme stress. And the second reason is governments are not exposed to the latest innovation in technologies. It has thus become imperative for governments all over the world to partner with the private sector, with companies such as Velo Group, so that through public-private partnerships, one can productively address the needs of the citizens of the future cities of the world. The new way of thinking about cities, especially in the developing world, is that they do not want some European or Western model of doing business or building infrastructure imposed on them. What they want is exactly what I had mentioned earlier, human centricity, which means localization of the technology to the context in which it is being applied. Smart pumps in Europe are deployed very differently from smart pumps in a village in Bangladesh. So in order for companies like Velo Group or other Western companies to go into these emerging cities, it is key for them to partner with other companies, to network with them. In fact, this kind of alliance between international and local companies is really the key to success, I feel, for smart city development. So I had the good fortune of working both with the Dubai government and of course with the Singapore government on smart city initiatives. And here's what I noticed. There was a great appetite and boldness amongst the government agencies in adopting new technologies, especially artificial intelligence, in a way that would significantly improve infrastructure pressures or even the quality of life of citizens. So in Singapore, we worked with their largest public transportation company, SMRT, to create a platform 
um, a marketplace of transportation modes that required all the different types of transport, whether it's buses, bike sharing, scooter sharing, autonomous vehicles, all to be available on one app for citizens. And this was something that has been really well received and spun out as an independent company, but it really makes it much easier for citizens as they move from A to B, not to have to open different apps, not to have to wonder what they're going to take or even own cars privately, but to have a one-stop shop for mobility, what is we call mobility as a service. In order to experiment with such things, there has to be openness, both from all the private companies that took part in the experiment and also from the government agencies that support it. I think the more governments are open to smart city experiments, the more value they'll see from it. And of course, like any tinkering and experimentation, if it's not working, you have to change it. People often ask me, am I a pessimist or an optimist about smart cities? The truth is, I'm neither. I'm neither naively optimistic or depressingly pessimistic. One has to have a balance. There's no doubt that we need technology, we need artificial intelligence, robotics, smart products in our cities. But equally, we also need better governance, new kinds of laws related to data, which fundamentally drives these smart products. And in that sense, GDPR from the European Union I think presents a very good step in that direction. In addition, we need more education because what is a city if people don't understand how to use it well? And so people should enjoy a city, a smart city for its efficiency, but then with the time that they have, they should be able to productively engage with each other and drive innovation for the economy. That's something that some cities in Europe and of course in Asia like Singapore are really moving towards now, building more than just efficient smart systems, really using a smart city to drive the innovation economy forward.